Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back, a very good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all my dear students. And this is the 15th uh, lecture and which is as per the norm the last lecture for the third week related to the course which is project management. And we had just started the concept of utility analysis and then last uh, slide before we ended the 14th lecture, I gave the example that how a person depending on his or her utility can make a decision such that the overall uh, picture which we get about that person can be either a risk loving person, a risk hater person and a risk indifferent person depending on the gamble and the sure event the per particular person is trying to compare. So, let us continue where we left. So, if you see this slide this is the investment processes and uh, we did mention about Again, I am, I am repeating it. The two characteristics, one was the concept of non-satiation. That means, more I give, the more the person wants, which means the first derivative of the utility function is positive. And the next point was, as I mentioned, risk aversion properties. Either I love, I hate or I am indifferent to the concept of risk. So, if you see this slide, it basically means that I am trying to balance two sides of the equation. In the first one or in the first equation, it means that what is the expected value of the gamble, the fair gamble example, it can be a gamble depending on what the outcomes are, but our example was basically to do with the fair gamble. So, the first term which is a multiplication of two terms is u i 1 into p i 1, where i 1 is the investment. So, the first term is the utility multiplied by its corresponding probability. Second is the second outcomes utility per correspondingly multiplied by the probability. And on the right hand side of this less than sign equal to sign and greater than sign is basically the sure event. So, you have basically the deterministic event or investment d i multiplied by 1 which is the probability. So, in this case, if in the first equation or first bullet point, if this is less than uh, this right hand side, which is the sure event is less than the, the concept of which is there on the right hand uh, left hand side, which is the gamble, which means the person is more inclined to take the, the, the sure event. So, he or she is risk averse. In the same notion, if we consider equality on both sides um, of, of, uh, for this equation, it means the person is indifferent and if it is greater that means the left hand side is more then we have the person who is a risk seeker or he wants to take the risk. Now, a risk seeker or the risk averse or risk neutral person is trying to analyze the problem from a very typical point of view. Now, if you see the gamble the last example which we consider the fair gamble and the sure event if I am a risk averse person, I am always thinking that the chances even though the probabilities are exactly the same half and half in the last example or here the probability is p i 1 and p i 2, the person is thinking that he would definitely get because as he is basically risk averse, he would be in a position that he is forced to take or the overall event would come in such a way that it will be negatively beneficial for him or her. So, it is best for that person to take the sure event. In case is a new risk neutral person, then he or he she is trying to balance what is the expected value or what is the net output both for the gamble and the sure event. And if it is a risk seeker person, he or she is thinking of that probability and the corresponding utility which would come out and benefit him or her. Even though in the long run, if you keep playing this gamble, obviously the expected value in both the cases for the sure event and the certainty event both are same. 
So another characteristics by which we can classify a person as a risk averse, risk neutral and risk seeker is by considering what is the second derivative of the utility function. So if the second derivative of the utility function is in the first bullet point as it mentions, if it is less than 0, it is a risk averse person. If it is in the second bullet point, it is basically equal to 0, the person is risk neutral and similarly for the third bullet point, it is greater than 0, the person is risk seeker. We will see that using the concept of absolute risk aversion property and the concept of relative risk aversion property. So now to give a, a very simple um, conceptual notion on graphical um, notion such that it, it really makes sense for the people who are taking this course. Let us consider the three graphs which are there shown here. Along the y axis you have the utility, utility of the decision, the project, the investment, whatever it is there. And on the y, uh, x axis you have the wealth, wealth is amount of investment you are doing. So there is a green curve which is slowly decreasing that the rate of change of this function. So I am mentioning the rate of change of the function because this will be useful in the later few slides is decreasing. Decreasing in the sense de the increase is there, but it is increasing at a decreasing rate. That is what I wanted to mention. If you concentrate on the blue one, it is increasing at a constant rate. If you consider the red one, it is increasing at an increasing rate. So all these three diagrams would definitely give you an immediate, very easy concept that how the concept of risk aversion property, risk ne neutral property and risk seeking property would come out from this. So now let us go into the concept of marginal utility functions and what we mean by the marginal rates. So the marginal utility functions basically means the first derivative based on that. So if the marginal utility function looks like a concave function, it is a risk aversion property. So if you see, if you go back to the last slide uh, in, in the, in just covered which is the 149 slide, you will see the red one which is increasing. So it would obviously means the marginal utility function looks like a convex function, hence the person is a risk seeker. If you see the blue one is the second bullet point which is the marginal utility function looks neither concave nor convex which is a straight line which is risk neutral and if you see the green one which is dipping going like this, uh, then it is a person who is a risk averse person. So marginal rates increasing, uh, increasing at a decreasing rate now means a risk averse person as I just mentioned uh, one minute back. Marginal rate is increasing at a constant rate which is a straight line is a risk neutral and marginal rate is increasing at an increasing rate. The red one is a risk seeker. So here what I was mentioning by the dy dx. So if you consider the blue one, here the color has been removed and I have only drawn one curve. So the, if you follow the pointer, it for it, the curve is like this, which means if I draw the dy dx of this at different points, then you see the theta angle is decreasing. So here is this theta here, here is the theta here, here is the theta. So it is decreasing. Um, uh, decreasing, it is increasing, but the rate of change is decreasing. So hence, it is basically a risk avoider. And for values I have taken arbitrarily to show it very clearly is W1, W1 plus 1, W1 plus 2 and so on and so forth. For a risk neutral person, it is a straight line, the blue one which you saw, here the rates, the dy dx is constant, the tan of the theta is constant, which is this one. So hence, it is a risk neutral person. And for the last curve, which was the one which was going up, the red one, if you see the dy dx is slowly now increasing. So this theta, this theta, this theta, this, this is the highest, then next one, then this one. So hence, the dy dx is increasing, hence the person is risk seeking. Now as I mentioned the second derivative, which is second derivative of the utility function with respect to the wealth, which is u double prime. So if you consider the first column, the second column and the third column, it will give you an immediate sense that how it is being explained. So risk aversion property would be a person who rejects a fair gamble, hence 
the rate of change of the second derivative is less than 0, because if the curve is like this. So, it is increasing d y d x is or d u d w is increasing, but is increasing at a decreasing rate. Hence, this is true. If it is a risk neutral person, the straight line it is indifferent to the if the person is indifferent to the fair gamble with respect to the certainty event, because here the rate is double derivative is 0. Similarly, for the third example, if it is going up, then the double derivative is positive. Now, we will consider two important properties, they are very heavily used in any decision making process, whether in a project and, and, and investments or trying to do an optimization problem, whatever it is. The first property is the absolute risk aversion property, without the proof I am giving the formula. So, A w which is the absolute risk uh, aversion utility function is given by negative of u double prime divided by u prime. Now, if you see this term u prime is always positive. So, the property of A w would depend on u double prime. So, if u double prime is positive, so positive multiplied by negative 1, it will be negative in nature, in characteristics. If u double prime is 0, 0 multiplied by whatever it is 0, so it will give you the concept that it is a risk neutral concept. And if you if u double prime is the third one, it is is negative, so negative and negative would become positive. So, you will have the concept of absolute risk aversion property coming out correspondingly. So, here I have mentioned. So, now what we do is that we will need to find out the derivative of A also, which means I we will need to find out the d y d x of or d of this function with d w. So, A w we want to find out which is equal to d w multiplied by u double prime, I am not writing w here. So, what my actual notion would be, I need to di differentiate this function which is a w and then find out how it behaves with respect to the rate of change of w. So, a prime if it is less than 0, this is a risk aversion property. If a prime is 0, is risk uh, but absolute risk aversion property is not that it is constant, that person is neither risk lover nor a risk hater, risk in indifferent person. And in the second case, which where you have an increasing absolute risk aversion property, that is the first derivative of A prime is 0, then correspondingly we, we allocate that property to the person who is taking the decision. Now, if you want to understand on a quali qualitative notion, so these are all mathematics, very simple mathematics. So, if I want to understand the concept on a qualitative notion, this is how it can be stated. So, again the conditions are given on the first column that is decreasing absolute risk, constant absolute risk and increasing absolute risk. So, if we consider the third column is exactly what I discussed in the last slide which was 157. So, now what it means is that consider only one, one property which is A prime is less than 0, which is the decreasing absolute risk aversion property, which means that as wealth increases, the amount health in risky assets, risky projects, whatever it is, is increasing. Now, which means my absolute risk aversion property is decreasing, that means I am willing to take the risk, which means I am becoming more and most, more of, of, of the characteristics where, where I am risk seeker because it would mean that if you if you read that that particular statement as wealth increases the amount of held in risky assets increases it means i am willing to hold more and more of my overall portfolio of the project of the investment whatever it is in risky assets so which means i am willing to take the risk if you consider the second point it, it's clearly stated that as wealth increases, the amount held in risky asset remains the same. That means, my total quantum remains the same. That means, I am neither willing to take the risk nor willing to basically hate, but I want to basically continue with my same concept that I am indifferent. So, hence the first derivative of A is 0. And if I come to the last point, it means a prime is greater than 0, which means as wealth increases, the amount health in risky asset decreases, which means I am not willing to take the risk as I increase more and more of my wealth. 
Now let us come to the second concept which is the relative risk aversion property. The first one was absolute, it is a relative risk aversion property. So, before I, I uh, come to the same sequence of how the explanation was done for A, let me mention the relative risk aversion property is very simply in, in layman terms used as the concept where in the relative sense whether the wealth in the risk assets is increasing, decreasing or constant. So, you will see that within the next two slides. So, relative risk aversion property RW is now given. So, this part which you have with a minus sign is always A w that is being multiplied by w. So, again if I want to draw some conclusions about the property of R, we know this is always positive because as per the concept of non satiation this is always positive because wealth has to be greater than 0, it is 1 rupee, 2 rupee or 10 dollars, 20 dollars or 100 euros, 200 euros whatever it is. So, again the property of R w would basically depend on this which is u prime, u double prime sorry. So, u double prime would definitely have an effect on what is the property of A and what is the property of R which is absolute and risk aversion, risk aversion properties which are there. Again following the same sequence of explanation R prime being less than 0 means decreasing relative uh, uh, risk aversion. R prime being 0, it means relative risk aversion property is constant and R prime being greater than 0 means the relative risk aversion property is increasing. So, let us again explain it as we did for A. Here the first column and the, th and the third column are same, only in the third column in place of R prime or for A prime we have replaced, sorry my mistake it is uh, um, A prime has been replaced by R prime. Again r prime is less than 0, equal to 0 and greater than 0 and again the conditions are exactly the same. So, here the absolute has word has been replaced by relative if you notice here. So, this is relative word, relative word, relative word. But what is interesting to note is the definition. So, as wealth increases the percentage held in risky asset increases. In that case it was the quantum sense, now it is the percentage sense. So, again it would mean as wealth is increasing the percent held in risk asset if increasing it means I am willing to be more risk taker, exactly the same thing as we have discussed for A prime. So, for the second point it means in the, in the percentage sense it is constant as it is mentioned remains the same. So, hence R pri prime is 0 that means I am risk neutral neither willing to take the risk nor willing to basically avoid the risk, I am basically indifferent. And then the last point where R prime, R prime is greater than 0, uh, it means that alt, as wealth increases, the percentage health in risk asset decreases. So, now let us um, uh, consider four different utility functions which are used very heavily in, in any decision making process, whether for a portfolio, whether for a project, whether for an optimization problem or whether for buying a car, buying a fridge, whatever it is. So, this is on a theoretical notion. So, obviously, there are other non parametric methods which are used for such qualitative decision. One was the AHP, there are other methods also which is not under the ambit of project management. So, some useful uh, functions are generally what is used, the most important one is the quadratic utility function. So, let us um, Pause here for two or three minutes. Let me explain about the quadratic utility function. If you if you see the function, it is a quadratic function. But what is very important and interesting about the fact is that this quadratic function has some connections with the normal distribution function. So if it can be proved in in finance literature, it can be improved in in economics literature in different investment purposes that if your returns are normally distributed, then the utility functions are quadratic in nature and vice versa. Now, normal distribution has very nice properties like finding out any combinations of normal distribution always results in a normal distribution like combining to normal would always lead to a normal distribution. So, if you remember the example of the risks which we mentioned the RF which is the risk free interest rate or RI or R k comma j depending on whether the projects 
uh, is the kth one, j is the jth period of time, whatever it is. If the returns are normally distributed, then, then you can assume that the utility function based on which the decision has been taken for those type of investments are quadratic in nature. So, we will consider this quadratic utility functions in general. The next point is the logarithmic one, which is that the utility function is given by ln of w, Napierian log. Now, if you go back to one of the slides earlier on, where investments were given, the prices were given, and we wanted to find out what was the utility in the, or the expected value of the utility, we did use ln of p, p was the price. So, that was just a precursor based on the fact that logarithmic utility functions can be also be utilized. Then we have the exponential um, um, utility function given by this formula of minus e to the power minus a w, w is the wealth and a is a parameter, is a positive constant. And while coming back to this, sorry I missed it. So, this value b is also a, a parameter which is constant in its, in its value. And the power function is given by uh, uh, c into w to the power c, where c is less than 0 and c is not uh, no, less than 1 and not 0. So, this is also a parameter for that power function. So, let us consider the concept of u prime, u double prime, a and a prime, r and r prime for all these four uh, utility functions and let us uh, spend some time in discussing that. So, the first one was the quadratic utility function. So, without going to the calculations, I have just written the bullet points and I will strongly urge the students to do it on their own, so as that they can get a feel that how these, these concepts comes into the play. So, if I consider a prime, the a prime value is given by 4 b square in the numerator divided by 1 minus 2 b into w whole square. So, now if b is as I mentioned, if it is positive, or negative, even it is negative does not matter. So, the numerator is always positive because it is square and the denominator is also positive because it is a square. So, if you consider this property for a prime, then you can without doing any calculations or without going into the details of trying to understand, you can immediately mention that is a got an increasing absolute risk aversion property. If I go to the r prime, the value is given by 2 b divided by the same denominator which was there in a prime. So, the denominator is basically positive and this 2 b the, the value in the sign for concept would def definitely depend on what is the value of b. So, if b is positive, 2 b is also positive. So, again we see it is an increasing relative risk aversion property. If b was negative, consider hypothetically, then the first concept a prime would always be positive because it does not matter it is square. So, it will always have an increasing absolute discoversion property, but if b was negative then this term which is in the numerator onto the right hand side of this equality for r prime will be negative hence it would have a decreasing risk aversion property. So, let I have done a very simple exercise exercise no i have just um, uh, given an example for the uh, for the quadratic utility function and i have done it in excel but just i have i am giving you some set of values so for the can the participants can understand on the leftmost column you have the w values arbitrarily taken from 2 3 4 5 that means each quantum of increase in w is by one unit it can be any other units but i have taken as one unit and if I consider the, the utility function u w, the u w values are given. So, what values of b I have considered you can immediately find from here. So, if this value is 3, it means w is 2, 2 minus some b value into w square which is 4. So, 4 basically would become 1 if b is 1 by 4. So, if I have w is say for example, the first equation 2 minus 1 by 4 into 4 because it is 2 square. Oh, sorry, my, my mistake. It should basically be, I have taken negative. My, my apologies, apologies here to make you understand. 
So, if I consider 2 uh, minus of minus 1 by 4 into 4 which is square. So, this 4 4 cancels this minus minus becomes plus to 2 plus 1 becomes 3. So, let us come to the second one 3 minus of minus 1 by 4 into 4 into 3 3 is a 9. So, becomes 4 2 is a 8 8 and uh, 2.25. So, it becomes 5.25. So, as it is given. So, I have taken negative just for explanation it can be taken as positive also. So, this u, prime, u values are given, it is a second column. Then I find out A w. So, A w formula which we all know is minus of u prime by u, 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 w, u double prime by u prime. So, how do you find out u prime? So, u prime I have not shown it here. So, you can just put some extra columns and do the calculations. So, u prime between value of w going changing from 2 to 3 would be 5.25 minus 3 which is the difference in the increase of the utility functions divided by the change of the utility. So, what was change in the value of w. So, it will be 5.25 minus 3 in the numerator and in the denominator the change of the w value is 3 minus 2. So, you, base, you will basically have 2.25 which is the difference divided by 1. So, this is basically u double prime, uh, u prime. Now, if I want to find out what is u double prime, again you will do the same calculations accordingly and then find out u double prime. So, I have omitted that and I would strongly urge the students to use these values like use the first column, the second column and redo the calculation considering there are third and fourth column which are not here which would be u prime and u double prime based on that you do the calculations and considering b value is minus 1 by 4. So, a prime a, a w is given. Now, I want to find out a prime. So, how do I do? So, these two difference between minus 0.2 minus or minus of 0.25 divided by 3 minus 2. So, this is in the difference is there in the uh, denominator and the values of difference of a is there in the numerator. So, based on that you find out the value of a prime. Now, if I want to find out the value of say for example, r, r as you know is basically a multiplied by w. So, if you see a multiplied by w it will be 2 multiplied by minus 0 0.25 which is minus 0 0.5. If you find out say for example, let us take another value. If it is coming out to be, let me check. Yes. So, if I want to find out say for example, the value of um, um, r for 5. So, it will be almost 5 to it will be point um, zero, minus 0 0.70, but I have taken uh, two or three places of decimals, hence it is coming of minus 0 0.71. So, all these values are given. So, once you know u which is not there, um, um, then you find out on this value of um, u prime, u double prime, based on that you find out a, a prime r, r prime. So, once r primes are given, so what you would need to do is that plot it. So, let us go one by one. So, if I want to find out the characteristics of r prime and a prime, just have a look at these values. So, it basically in a certain range it is positive. So, you immediately go into the characteristics of what is a prime, it is greater than 0, equal to 0, less than 0, you give your comments accordingly. Similarly, for r prime, the values are given, immediately you come up with the concept where r prime is greater than 0 less than 0 equal to 0 based on that you give the comments. So, I have tried to draw it for the same graph. It may not be very clear visible, but uh, if you do it in excel you will immediately understand. So, the pink one is u, then the yellow one which is somewhere here. If you draw it you will understand accordingly and I strongly urge and request the students to draw it. You have the value of a, a prime, r, r prime. So, this actual excel sheet gives you the all the characteristics of the curve which is there considering the utility function is quadratic. 
So, with this I will um, end the 15th lecture. The 16th lecture would basically start with the other three different type of utility functions which were there, which was logarithmic, then exponential and power functions. And in the similar way, I will give you an excel sheet which will explain that how the graphs were drawn. Once you understand, you will be able to appreciate the examples later on. Have a nice day. Thank you very much.